there's a lot of new really cool tools in Resolve 19 that were just announced the other day and I've been playing with them nonstop. There's some really cool stuff. It's caused me to go back and rework the way that I'm setting up my standard node tree and I've developed a new one that I really, really like and I'll show you how to make it. First things first, as you can see, this is DaVinci Resolve Studio 19. You will have to update to get some of these new tools that we're gonna cover like this color slice tool and the film look creator. I wanna start off with this first clip here because I have green trees in the background. There's some harsh light. We have a little bit of skin tone here on me. And then I went and found my bluest sweatshirt and my reddest windbreaker and wore them together so we can see really what the color density is doing. The first step I always take is to put a CST on here. This was recorded with an FX30 in SCAM at 3.cine and SLOG3. The color space that I'm usually working in in my timeline is DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. My output is set to 709A, which is a Mac OS thing that we don't have time to go into, but I do have it in Wide Gamut Intermediate, which is a much bigger color space than Rec 709. So what I'm gonna do is set the output to DaVinci Wide Gamut and Intermediate. So now I'm operating within the timeline color space. I'm gonna add another node with option S, color space transform again. This time we're gonna take it from DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate to Rec 709 and Rec 709A. So we're essentially taking S-Log3, changing it to Rec 709, but in between these two nodes, we're gonna be working in a huge color space, so it'll give us a lot of freedom. If I decide that this is too bright maybe, and this was not recorded in RAW, the best way that I found to quick and dirty adjust the exposure is to add a node in between the CSTs, go to HDR, and then under global, this exposure wheel is pretty accurate. So maybe I would boost that. And then maybe if I wanted to do a little bit of contrast work, I would add another node, go to curves, turn on editable splines, and then I'll just keep my eye on the waveform, make sure that the shadows are nice and soft. This is usually the way that I would correct a shot, but there is two new tools that I wanna to highlight today. The first one's called color slice. So we can add a new node and then come over here to this one right here. A proper explanation of color density is above my pay grade, but a very crude way to explain it is that most of the time when we're adding saturation in suites like DaVinci Resolve, if you just grab saturation and pull it up, you're adding luminance to each pixel. But a lot of times what looks more natural is a subtraction of luminance while adding saturation, which is the way that film works, which kind of makes sense. If there's more color in film, it'd be harder for light to get through it. At least that's the way that I kind of have understood it. We call this subtractive saturation. In the past, it's only been possible with either plugins or pretty complicated node trees. In Color Slice, you have access to red, skin tones, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. And under each of those, you can adjust the saturation and the density. I'm gonna zoom in on my Mickey windbreaker here, which is just the reddest of reds. This is saturation. And you can see that we're only affecting the red, which is kind of goofy. We can go over here to the blue and do the same thing. If you're gonna add saturation, you can see that it just gets really bright, kind of nuclear. I mean, we are pushing it really far, but still you get the idea. Density is a little bit different because if we bump that, it gets darker as it gets more saturated. And then the opposite, if you go the other way, it gets brighter. I have a lot of preference for where I like colors to land on density, which is totally subjective on my part. Like I like my greens to be dark and sort of unsaturated. I like skin tones to be bright, not as dense. I like reds to be not as dense, but I like my cyans to be very vibrant and pretty dense. I like yellows to be a little unsaturated, a little bit brighter. This tool makes it really easy to get a smoother shot. So if I just go through here really fast, we'll go a little bit less dense on the red, maybe take away a touch of the saturation, less density on the skin tone, less density on yellow, more density on green, a little bit less on cyan, a little bit less on blue. And then if we toggle this on and off, it's pretty subtle, but I like what it's doing. The trees are a little bit less punchy, skin tone's a little bit more punchy, but everything still looks smooth. I love this tool, I've been playing with it for days, but I'm gonna move on to the next one, which of course is the Film Look Creator. Now, one thing to note, there is a color space override in here where you can, you can override and work in another color space. You have to make sure that this node is in the right spot. I had it in the wrong spot for a while and it was really messing me up because I had it after my last CST. And if you put this on here, it's gonna do some crazy stuff because it's working in DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate because that's what my timeline's set up as. So you'd have to go in here to color space override and change this all to Rec 709. But instead, I'm just gonna put the node in between our two CSTs so the color spaces are matching up. 
This plugin is basically just a film emulation that you can go in and tweak a lot of the parameters, which is really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and change the preset to clean slate. And if we toggle this on and off, you can see that it's doing absolutely nothing. The first thing you can do is come down to film look blend. I'm gonna turn it all the way up to one. And then there's these core looks. And I think they've done a really good job with all five of these. I don't know if they'll add more in the future, but none of them feel heavy handed to me. They're really subtle. I think they're all beautiful. I think they all have their own use cases. I sat here and did exactly what I'm doing right now and just going through the five one by one for like two hours whenever this update came out and I couldn't decide which one I wanted to build my node tree off of. And I'll change them up in the future, but cinematic is the most subtle. It really just kind of smooths everything out. It's not doing a whole bunch of extra shifting, like something something like vintage is doing a lot and is really going after a certain look. I think cinematic may be the least biased, the most versatile. We got a Kodak look. I love what it does to blues there. The Fujifilm look. Play with these, they're super duper fun. Now you can operate within your film emulation if you wanna adjust the exposure. This slider does a really good job. There's contrast highlights if you wanna bring your highlights down. Fade, just bringing your black plane up. There's tint, there's white balance, and in here there's subtractive saturation built directly in in case you wanna punch that up or down. Richness, I'm not entirely sure what the difference between richness, subtractive sat, and regular sat is, but you gotta hear if you wanna add some richness. There's split toning, so if you enable that, and turn that up, you can change the hue angle. So it's kind of trying to pick out where the skin tones are and then it's making everything else a little bit cooler. There's other stuff in here. There's vignettes, there's halation, there's bloom, there's really good grain. But let's move on to the way that I've set up my node tree and I'll walk you through every single node that I have. We're gonna reset the entire grade. I'm gonna go up to gallery and I'm gonna grab the sauce. I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything off. First note I have is noise reduction, which is by default off. If I need it, I usually put it in the beginning of the node tree. I feel like I get the best results that way so that any color adjustments I'm making aren't affecting the noise and then that would be harder to denoise later. It's just happening first. We're gonna leave that off. First thing I have is a CST, which goes from, this was an FX30 again, so S-Log3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut and Intermediate. I'm gonna skip a couple nodes, come down here to log to 709, and that's changing from wide gamut intermediate to 709, so I'm gonna turn that one on. So now we only have the CSTs on. In between these two, I have a couple nodes. This one is called CC, color correction. This is where I'm doing rough exposure changes, white balance changes, anything like that. And here, most of the time, I'm just popping over to HDR, I'm grabbing exposure, and maybe we need to bump up the exposure just a little bit. Next node is contrast. I prefer to do contrast and curves. I'm not entirely sure why, it's just the most comfortable area for me to work in. So maybe I would come in here and work on contrast a little bit. That note is there if I need it. The reason I like structuring these two this way is if I'm going for an insane ramp or something, and then I need more exposure on this top end, I can go back to the CC and feed it a little bit more exposure. And then it's still respecting this curve that I have down here. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. I'm gonna skip film emulation for now. Next is my film emulation, which is cinematic. I have it set all the way up to one. And then I've gone through these parameters and changed little things here and there, just based on preference. I took like five different shots that were different exposures, different colors, and I would grade one of them the way I thought that it should look. And then I would copy that grade and put it on the next one. And if, and if I cross-reference them and something was kind of weird, I would split the difference. And then once I got all five looking awesome with the same grade, and I know that the film emulation isn't doing anything weird with certain colors, then I stuck with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And I just love what this is doing. It adds such smoothness to the shot. And again, that's cinematic. If I'm going for a different look, it's as easy as coming through here to core look, hitting this drop down, maybe hitting vintage or something. Right after that, I have a node called adjust up here in the top right. The reason why I have it up here in the corner is because a lot of time I'm doing parallel nodes here. So if I hold option and press P, it adds a parallel node and those will just kind of stack up over here on the side. The reason why you would do parallel here is because if you have like five serial nodes in a row and the first one's making the shot brighter and the second one's doing this and the second one's doing this, they're all stacking effects on each other. Whereas a parallel node all references the previous node. So they're all adding their corrections to the same node, which would be my bookend CST. So it's all kind of referencing this final shot. This is where I would do power windows or anything like that. Sometimes additional grading will go here. I'll just go ahead and leave that on because there's nothing in it, but that's where that node lives. After that, I have a texture shot. This is the way that I like to set up texture, at least for my Ursa right now. I'll turn that on. I have mid-tone detail at minus 20. 
and then I have blur at 0.52, just barely taking that digital edge off. I'll zoom into my hair and toggle this. Just takes a little bit of that bite away. If it's another camera that's a little softer or a little bit sharper, I'll just go in there and move those sliders a little bit. But in general, I always have this note on. I prefer to take away the digital sharpness and then add a little bit more sharpness at the end with a little bit of film grain. I prefer that, that texture workflow, but we'll get to that in a second. Next note is density. And if we toggle that on and off, it's doing the same thing that we looked at earlier, taking the greens and the yellows and making them darker. Reds, it's making a little bit less dense, a little bit less saturated. And skin tones are getting less dense, but keeping their saturation. So it's pulling a little bit more emphasis towards the warmer tones. I think it brings more subtlety into the shot. And this plugin specifically, I found is the best way to correct the weird quirks that all of the different camera brands have. So when you're shooting with Canon and maybe everything looks pink and, and a little red and magenta, you can bring back that density and brighten stuff up. Maybe you're shooting on Sony and there's too much yellow and everything. Instead of just taking global saturation down on yellow, you can instead, you can make yellows a little bit darker or you can make them a little bit brighter. Last note is grain, which I'll go through really quick. This is based off of the 35 millimeter preset. I turn the opacity all the way up. Grain size is all the way down on 35 millimeter. Strength I have at 0.266, completely arbitrary. It's just eyeballing it. I turn the softness up and I turn the saturation up. And then down here in advanced controls, I usually turn midtones down. I like it when highlights and shadows are a little noisier. I don't like when a talent's face is like swimming in noise. So I, I turn the midtones down and there's the sauce all together. I'm going to go ahead and do all the nodes here. I'm going to grab density, grain, texture, and film emulation. So you can see what I would have normally done with a node tree and then what I'm doing now with this preset. There's off and there's on. I love what it's doing to the texture, taking that digital edge off. I love what it's doing to overly saturated colors like red, it kind of brings them down, but there's still richness to it. Skin tones are still rich up in the mix, but there's a lot more color separation. It just looks way less harsh to me. Dare I say a little bit more filmic. I know that's gross. I have a couple other clips that we can look at here with the same thing, just so we can sort of cross-reference them. Grab the sauce, put it on here. First thing we gotta do is come up here to this first CST. This is not in Blackmagic Film Gen 5. I have it preset to that because that's what I'm using most of the time, but this was shot in a C70, so it's C-Log 2. Maybe this shot is a little bit too bright. Bump the exposure down. And then there's before and after the sauce. Again, it just looks a lot smoother, especially with that texture node, what that's doing here. It does look a little bit green to me. The way that I would fix that is probably in adjust. Add a little bit of magenta back. I think my favorite thing about this grade is just the color separation that happens. When you're looking at this shot, the wood is very, very neutral. The background's very neutral. She's very warm, very chocolatey in color. And then if we look at this, everything that's not really earthy, really warm, kind of takes on this really subtle, cool, almost greenness to it. Okay, this next one's interesting because this is recorded with my Ursa at 3200 and it's still underexposed pretty significantly. So we'll change this to Gen 5, put on the sauce. And on this shot, I would be adjusting contrast, I think. And my favorite way to handle really, really noisy shadows like this is to bring the black point way up, create a gigantic smooth curve, and then ease this back down. We can go like there. And then we can ease off a little bit. Let's look what the colors are doing. I love it when blues are a little bit more green, a little bit more cyan and not purpley. And uh, the sauce is doing that for me. Here's a different camera. This is with an FX3. Shot on, can't remember which one, but it's a Vespid. Let's do S-Log3. Bump of exposure a bit. Another cool thing to note, I would imagine this is mostly the film emulation. Keep your eyes down here. I'll turn this up. Keep your eyes down here on where we're clipping on the highlights. There's sort of a little bit of assistance on the highlight roll off. That more or less is how the camera recorded it. And you can see up here that there's a little bit of grossness in here if we push it too far. And when you turn it up, it eases to a stop instead of just linearly going above the waveform and clipping really hard, it all bunches up and kind of coils the way that you want to see highlights. And what's amazing is we can go all the way up here and it's still not doing anything super weird. Maybe it would help it a little bit with the contrast. It 
pull this guy up a little bit, bring the ultimate black point up, and then give it a little bit of an S curve. This one I want to show because I find in the old days, Sony sensors were a little bit too green, a little bit too yellow, maybe kind of sickly. And these days, I think they are, hmm, this is kind of hard to describe. Maybe a little bit more neutral than a Canon, but sometimes there's this extra magenta purpley in skin tones. But if we toggle on and off what's happening here, it's taking that away. Number one, this pink pillow is becoming a little bit more smooth. If you look up here at the, the white parts, there's darker parts in here, maybe this pillow and toggle it on and off. It's taking away that, that purpley look, replacing it with that smooth, cooler look, but keeping the richness in the skin tone which again, I'm, I'm loving the color separation that's happening here. It really makes this whole, <laughs> whenever you toggle it off and look at the original shot, it makes everything look purple and red and kind of severe. Last shot, here's all my girls. We'll put sauce on there. This is another shot if we take everything and toggle it on and off. It might be a little bit too green now. We'll handle that in a second, but the reason why I like this shot as a demo is because there's a lot of books behind my wife and a lot of them are super saturated, like this one right here just a nuclear orange color. And if you toggle it on and off, it's taking away that severity. Same thing with this green one. I would say this might be just a tiny bit too green, which is as easy as going into adjust, bringing up the tint, adding a little bit of magenta back in, and then we can toggle between the two. So the colors aren't really shifting at all at this point. It's just making it a little bit more smooth, adding a little bit of color separation. And if you guys want to come through here and make your own node tree and then save it like I have so that you can use it later, all you have to do is just set up everything the exact way that you want to do it. Go to gallery, make sure that power grade is selected, right click, grab still, and now it's up there. Your grid is saved. And then whenever you're doing, I'm going to reset just to show you. When you're doing any shot ever, you can just grab that still down and it'll just apply that grade. I got it to say the sauce because I just took a title and applied the grade to the title. I'm probably going to continue to adjust this power grade, but I'm really, really, really happy with how it turns out. And chances are everything you see from me for a while will be using the sauce or some variation of the sauce. Color Slice is an awesome plugin. I'm loving the film emulation. And once again, I'm super happy that I'm a DaVinci Resolve user. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you and I'll see you soon.